And now, since interest rates are going up, that's the end of the mirage, that the bubble has been popped. And if the FTX scandal and the Sam Bankman Freed scandal was like the last dregs of a 40 year bacchanal in cheap money, no regulation and crooked bankers. Hey guys, welcome back to Let's Talk Crypto. In this interview with Tucker Carlson, Bitcoin advocate and financial journalist Max Kaiser, talks about how Bitcoin was designed to be attacked and disrupt the financial system. Kaiser says that we're living a time where the traditional finance is imploding, but Bitcoin is experiencing another chapter, causing shock waves around the world and making central banks nervous. He goes on talking about the FTX collapse and how Sam Bankman-Fried essentially copied the Fed by minting his own money and giving most of it to himself. He compared this Ponzi scheme to the 2008 financial crisis, where Wall Street banks were feeding on low rates and cheap money to fund a financial alchemy scam. The FTX scandal represents the end of this 40-year cycle of scams, he says. Let's listen to Max Kaiser as he exposes these scams in further detail and explains how Bitcoin solves this. But before we do, please consider subscribing to our channel, as we bring you daily content on the latest crypto news. And now, let's jump right into the video. There is a lot of confusion now, Bitcoin and crypto, and what happened with FTX. Uh, but in the case of Bitcoin, it's designed to be attacked. Bitcoin is designed to disrupt the financial system, the fiat money system. And the way it's designed, Tucker, is that the more you try to attack it, the stronger it gets because the way to attack it is to throw computational power at it, which enhances those to continue to mine it, which means that the hash rate, which is the underlying algorithm that gives it its power, gets stronger, which means it gets more secure, and therefore the price goes higher. So it's actually, it's a unique piece of technology that people either love it or hate it. It's almost like a litmus test. If you're essentially a corrupt individual, you become more corrupt, like Sam Bankman-Fried. He was born a corrupt individual. Bitcoin made him more corrupt. If you're somebody who's more noble with intentions, like a Michael Saylor, it elevates you to greater heights of what was underlying a noble instinct. And so what we're seeing now is really another chapter in the history of Bitcoin where the traditional finance is imploding. Uh, the central banks are nervous. The central banks are having hearings. The, Christine Lagarde is quite upset because she says that Bitcoin is an escape hatch. And of course, she's right because you're escaping the central bank system, the fiat money system, with money that allows people to have unconfiscatable property that's un, completely outside of the current system. And that scares people if you have a population owning unconfiscatable property that cannot be assailed by any authority. It's completely decentralized. And, and that's why it's causing the shock waves around the world. Sam Bankman Freed, the key to his empire of fraud is that he created his own play money token called FTT. And he was able to create that without any oversight or any uh, tie to anything underlying um, it, giving it value whatsoever. And this is a whole a cryptographic scam that's been going on with the crypto market where individuals, and he's not the only one, there are many people that create these what are called alt coins or scam coins. And they create, uh, Ether is another one, or Cardano or XRP. These are all uh, coins that are just created. And then they list these coins on each other's exchange. And then they buy them from each other to create a price. And then they use the enhanced price, which is now as a collateral value, to go buy something like Sam Bankman-Fried did, real estate in the Bahamas. Right. Right. So it's a Ponzi scheme. The, the closest analogy I'll give you would be in 2008 during the financial crisis, the ability of Wall Street banks to create derivatives right. and mortgage backed securities. Right. So they were simply taking something, a plain vanilla mortgage, and then they were rehypothecating it and repackaging it and creating digital um, financial alchemy to make something that was worthless have a, a quotable value and then using that as collateral to float more derivatives. And as Chuck Prince of Citibank said at the time, this will continue until the music stops. Well, guess what? The music stopped and the whole house of cards collapsed. And the central bank, who was really responsible for the whole thing by making money so cheap to fund the scam, 
came in and made money even cheaper. So instead of there being any accountability, instead of there being people going to jail, and what they did in America was instead of making that particular type of fraud illegal, they simply changed the laws to make it so that it, it was not never going to be prosecuted again. And it opened the door in the 1980s for all kinds of other scams, which then led to the 2008 crisis and the current crisis we have today. We have laws in the books, Tucker, but we don't have anyone enforcing those laws. And implied in the Sam Bankman-Fried crisis uh, scam is none other than Gary Gensler over at the SEC, who should have been calling time on this a long ago, but we find out that he's actually involved and that there is some what I would call collusion. And the problem is in America, you have a country that's ruled by a kleptocracy. Every institution in America is tied to Wall Street in some way. They've all been financialized. They all use cheap money. They're all cross-collateraling each other's assets. They're all using that money to buy real assets. And they're all undermining the economy in fundamental ways, which lead to inflation, which lead to unemployment, which lead to all kinds of dysfunctions in the economy. It all goes back to essentially the deregulation that happened 40 years ago, which led to the financialization and the over indebtedness, the over leveraging of the economy. And now since interest rates are going up, that's the end of the mirage, that the bubble has been popped. And if the FTX scandal and the Sam Bankman Freed scandal was like the last dregs of a 40 year bacchanal in cheap money, no regulation and crooked bankers. Having started in Wall Street and worked there for eight years, Kaiser has a pretty deep knowledge and understanding of market price manipulation. In the next segment, Kaiser exposes how these frauds have been committed over time by central bankers and how Bitcoin can solve this. So I started in the 1982 on Wall Street as a stockbroker. I worked there for, for eight years. I worked at Payne Weber. I worked at Oppenheimer. I worked at Sherson Lehman Hutton. I worked at Alex Brown and Company. And um, so I had a front row seat during a period in financial history in America where a lot of innovation, so-called, was was brought to fore because of the appearance in the 70s, late 70s, of the discount brokers. So what happened is to, for Wall Street to compete with the discounts, like the Charles Schwab's right, and others, right. they went on a spree of inventing products. And they went uh, and they created, for example, Mike Milken and junk bonds. That was a way to grab back some revenue from they were losing it to the discounters. So they created the leverage buyout, became huge. And in America, you had the corporate raiders who came in, Carl Icahn and others who went to Mike Milken and they borrowed tons of money and they bought assets and then they stripped those assets. And so Wall Street was let loose in, in effect. And Alan Greenspan at the time at the Fed was saying, well, you know, my job is not really price stability anymore. My job is to service Wall Street. Anytime they get in trouble, I'm going to make interest rates cheaper and I'm going to bail out Wall Street. That was the new mandate for the Fed. And that's that they call it the Greenspan put. Well, later on in retirement, he, he said publicly that he regrets now and he looks back and he said he was wrong, uh, that the idea of simply throwing the keys uh, to, of the castle to Wall Street, letting them do whatever they wanted to do was was incorrect. But at the time, remember, Alan Greenspan was doing ads for Apple Computer and he was a media figure. Yes. And so he was very egocentrically driven to have the attention drawn to him. He was not like Paul Volcker, who preceded him, who took rates up to 16 to 17 uh, percent to wipe out the inflation. That was the result of the Vietnam War and all the profligate spending in the U.S. So he became a celebrity. And this was the first time really you had financiers become celebrities. Flash forward to Ben Bernanke and Hank Paulson and the financial crisis, where they're on the cover of Time magazine as saving the world by uh, in the 2008 crisis with Timothy Geithner was atrocious uh, chapter in, in American financial history where laws were broken and rewritten uh, on the fly, uh, where Hank Paulson put a gun to Congress head and said, give us uh, $780 billion right now or we're going to crash the market. And the next day, the markets did start to crash. And then Congress said, oh, sorry, yeah, we'll give you your money. So they they're hold uh, the Congress hostage because they can manipulate prices. I can tell you technologically how to, how to manipulate markets using algorithms quite easily to create the prices you want. The markets today, Tucker, are not the result of buyers and sellers coming together and creating a market price. It's, That's what we imagine. It's the result of, so let's say, a Goldman Sachs saying, we want the price to be X, so we're going to fill the trades in to get to X. So they determine the prices in advance that they want to see. Well, that's not a real market. No, it's a command and control system. It's central planning. 
It's not capitalism at all. Don't blame, don't blame capitalism for the ills of the American economy because we don't live in a capitalist society. We live in a command and control society where the fundamental element of the economy, money, the price of that money is set by the Central Committee, the Politburo, known as the federal, uh, the FOMC. That's not a market-driven economy. Uh, so that's a problem number one. Bitcoin solves this because Bitcoin is not controlled by anyone. It is pure market driven. And the price of Bitcoin, the value of Bitcoin is dictated purely by people's um, willingness to have or, or need to have an unconfiscatable, uncensorable way to uh, own property outside of what they see as a, a very big corrupt system. Now, you had Michael Saylor on your show who did a very great explanation about how Bitcoin beats inflation. You know, what I would add to it is that Bitcoin beats the kleptocracy. Bitcoin beats the, the inherent fraud and, and the problems in the U.S. economy as it has now descended into what would almost be argued a permanent state of dysfunction by a, a, a captured regulators, uh, venal, uh, ineffective politicians and um, a media uh, present company excluded, but a media that's in also in their pocket as well. So we have a, really a crisis. We live in a command and control society, but Bitcoin is an escape hatch from the corruption and fraud of the fiat system, which according to Kaiser is coming close to an end. What do you guys think of Kaiser's view on this matter? Can Bitcoin replace fiat over time? Let us know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give us a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. This is Let's Talk Crypto and we'll see you in the next video.